Yo, yo, it's ODB. This is our lifestyle podcast. This is issue one of Street Trucks Magazine. Taking a little break from mini trucking. We did five last week and I don't know, three to five the previous week. Uh, if you're new here, please subscribe. It's free, of course. And uh, we're going through all the mini trucking magazines. I have branched off. I went through some of the trucking features. I mean, those uh, issues are so packed. We can't really flip through them, everything. But uh, I do plan to go through more street trucks. This is a classic. 23 plus years ago, issue one, the premiere issue, August 99 comes out. It's got Mike Kaufman, aka Big Mike, his truck on the cover, Syndicate of Style, that Colorado Custom windshield banner we recently replicated. Uh, thanks to Josh Ellis and Colorado Custom, Michael, uh, and then our friends at Graphic Graphics Mafia for doing that for us. Um, you get the Paradox uh, CC Colorado Custom Wheels. Meet the staff. You have the trifecta here. Steve Stillwell, rest in peace. Brian McCormick and rest in peace. Courtney Hallowell. Ironically enough, in our mini truck and magazine flip throughs, we just got to the point that Courtney had become the editor, which was in mid-98. And his stay, of course, there isn't long. I won't give everything away, but you do see he is here on staff. Let's jump right in. So you got the Belltech ad. The legend continues. You can see in the upper right, 1990, 96, and 99. Uh, pretty cool uh, showing also the, I got to thank uh, TD, Tim Davis. Uh, let's just pan up here, right there. Got a little bit of glare. Sorry about that. But there is the famous poster. Kind of rare to come by these days. I can't thank Tim enough for hooking me up with that one. One of my favorite trucks. That was a cover, uh, a cover truck for trucking. I did a, an ODB's corner on that if you go back on our channel. Uh, table of contents was always on fire here. So number one, you got Kaufman's Cal Concepts Laced 88 to 98. That Phantom Grildo. Amazing Cal Concepts paint. All of the detail. And then you can just see, boom, bullet pointed down for the most part. Insane amount of content. We drove around looking for these issues when we heard the magazine was coming out. Here you've got Word on the Street that has stayed around a long time. I think it's still going. This is Shorty. And then I recently teased in a video that I did what was the first mini truck featured in uh, Street Trucks. And I kind of teased, was it Last Look? And although it's not featured here, it's pretty cool to see. And the cool thing is, is if you look back at the cover, you see where it says the all-encompassing custom trucks publication. And then it says classics, full-size minis, cutting-edge customs. That was important because if you think about Stillwell loving the classic trucks, Brian loving kind of the late model sport truck era, and uh, Courtney being the mini trucking guy, um, what a team that was. Here you've got Ryan Leonard. I talked to him years ago, I don't know, five, six, seven years ago at uh, the SEMA uh, severed get-together in uh, front of the D out there in Vegas. And, you know, of course, this truck, for those that don't know, was never finished. But it was kind of one that inspired me early on uh, seeing, you know, these guys, you know, going, hey, we're going to build a full chassis. And it was maybe a little bit too uh, ahead of its time, so to speak. But check out all the chrome. And you can see Maxwell Designs, uh, he uh, did the rendering, Pat Maxwell. You can see it is basically a Pathfinder that's a Roadster. Pretty cool stuff. I think I posted that recently. I forget if I did. Uh, here, again, rest in peace, uh, Steve Stowell, who we the world lost earlier this year. Um, when we've had uh, Chris Schmidt, who owned the Sonoma. We've had Hot Rod Christina. She did the rendering for it. We've had Brian McCormick on, a lot of different folks. And we, excuse me, talked extensively about um, this first issue. And although it ended up with Mike Kaufman, like Brian McCormick said, you know, there was really no um, uh, decide, you know, there was no decision that needed to be made. They knew it was going to be that truck. But uh, you could see here, they kind of teased us with what the, the premiere issue could have looked like. And again, Chris Schmidt, uh, he became great friends with Courtney, and Courtney helped uh, secure the cover that he gets on Mini Trucking. Uh, and again, Courtney was there just under a year in terms of the editor, but ironic enough, it also uh, makes appearances over here, which you'll see here in this issue a little bit later. 
Uh, another cool thing is, boom, they come out uh, guns a blazing, all color. So that was pretty cool. Again, if you've been following our mini truck and magazine flip throughs, they're not all color yet. Here's Empire Motorsports. Some of this gold that they used to sell. I wish they were still around. Um, I used to just look at all this stuff for my burb and go, man, what can I what can I afford? And you could see there, depending on the, the kit that you had, you had all the punch outs, little pieces. A lot of that was just kind of on there with two-sided tape. Uh, you got the Maneva started with the uh, the dual or single needle gauge, but the paddle gauge deals. Uh, Bill Turner, Nuts and Bolts, he wrote that one for a while, I think, that editorial. Big block, so I could tell just by looking at this, this was a Brian McCormick feature, just with that kind of sunset in the background, classic truck, of course, a 55 Chevy, uh, pretty awesome, and um, it showed the type of vehicles that they were going to be featuring. You know, it wasn't going to be just one thing. It was a mix between trucking and mini trucking, I think, in many ways. And the other thing that I wanted to mention is, I think it was in the beginning, it was Yi Publishing, I think. But um, we'll jump back here real quick and take a look. I meant to mention that, but you can see here, still well, you can see the contributors. And uh, some of the folks, yeah, Chris Yi, it was Y Visionary Publishing. And he, we saw over with um, trucking, I think was, uh, if I remember correctly, someone can chime in. I believe he was tied in at one point with uh, McMullen. So, you know, all these different conglomerates and whatnot. So jumping back to where we were at, um, here again, just kind of the market. This was always cool. Sir Michael's roll pan, Colorado custom ad on the right. They uh, had a good amount of featured vehicles um, out of the gate. Welcome to my world. Fasten your seatbelts, Brian McCormick. Again, it was really cool that we had him on the podcast. I always looked up to Brian. I read his editorials every month. It was one of the first things I would look at in these magazines besides the table of contents. Here's Paso 99. I think some of this coverage can be found online at different sites if you know where to look. And uh, I like this layout with the kind of the film graphic. Here you've got California Customs. They were a big name in the scene at that point. Rest in peace, Steve Stillwell here. Golden States, Seth Dalton there with Steve. And I used to have one of those. I don't know what happened to it. I had a white version of that shirt. There's the OG Street Trucks hat. That was my favorite logo that they ever had. Master Image Customs, the Sonoma. We have tagged the owner in that. We do have a little bit of video of it next to West Side back in the day, thanks to uh, Steve Nielsen. If you are new here, like I said, please consider subscribing and uh, turn on the bell notification. If not, if you can, watch these videos all the way through. Um, even if you're not maybe a historian of this stuff like, like uh, we are. A syndicate of style, so really a lot to talk about here, but I can tell you this, we've well, we've documented this one very well. This is Mike Kaufman, as I mentioned. It is his 88 to 98 masterpiece. And a lot of different folks were involved. I think Gendro even did some work on it. We know when uh, we had Rick Bentley on, episode 100, keeping on 100 with Rick Bentley. Um, he talked about uh, what he did on the truck. There were a lot of different players, and this thing just came out amazing. Um, I even posted video, uh, even though Mike Coffin's not too big on social media, you can find him on Instagram and you can probably look and see what we've tagged him in. I posted a video that did not have, it was kind of a rare look. Only time I think I recall seeing it where it didn't have the um, the wheel in the back there. And of course it's painted underneath there, all show quality. Uh, just really ahead of its time, I think in many ways. Uh, oftentimes you'll hear this one, people will say this is their favorite um, full size built. Um, it's up there with, you know, in my book as well. Uh, for a C1500, probably my favorite truck that I could think of. Uh, this is the, always the one I, I think of the first. You can see right there Cal Concepts. And we've had uh, all the original members on. Um, and, you know, we talked about with Craig and Dion the little mischief that the little characters would always. Uh, would always be getting into. Uh, really, not the craziest interior, but perfect for that time and definitely a timeless truck. 
The other thing that I always thought was great is they included the chassis photo to kind of show that this thing wasn't just a lipstick job. And you can see the Paradox wheels. Um, for those that know I love Back to the Future, Paradox, uh, if I remember correctly, that was the fake name of the movie. So on the clapper boards and during filming to kind of keep the name concealed or maybe the final name hadn't been approved, uh, Paradox was that uh, was that name. Now, I did this flip through once, and I kind of didn't like the glare that was out in my shop. I do have two copies of this. I think my other copy uh, has the, um, the thing uh, pulled out as well. And when I was doing that flip through, I recalled the reason why, if you guys remember, I kind of leave those in normally. Well, when, we, when you drive around looking for the issue, you want... <laughs> You want to end up trying to um, get a subscription. And over the years, I've acquired uh, two copies of this one. I had my original one I bought, and I think the other one came from a friend of mine. Um, I figured, oh, actually, I think maybe my buddy Paul Lane maybe hooked me up with this one. My brother, one of my oldest friends. But you could just see here the pain. I mean, I could do a whole feature on this one. Uh, really, Brian McCormick just killed it. With the features, I mean, to be able to see all these colors, and uh, I know it sounds cliche, it's like sometimes I miss um, just the photography style of Brian, seeing it in print. Um, we do have some good photographers out there, but I think, you know, the way companies are these days and they cut costs, um, it's not always um, something you're going to, you know, you're going to see. I mean, this is truly an amazing issue, an amazing feature. A lot of guys involved in this one. Again, I know Rick Bentley. Um, I believe uh, Brian Gendro has chimed in and said he helped on this some way, form, or fashion. Cal Concepts, of course, including K-Daddy. And we try to, I try to tag in the past all the players if I can. There's the same photo we saw on Table of Contents. So kind of a little bit of Photoshop deal there to kind of peel it away. However, they were doing that in, the, in 99. You can see here the trick with the gas cap inside the... Door jam, of course, billet or looks like chromed, I would say, uh, strikers. And then boom, the caddy taillights, which are classic. And then you can see right down there on that edge, the corner, um, some more of the Cal Concepts little deals. But the uh, ST right here signified boom. We were at the end of the feature. And like I said, just truly, truly, truly an amazing truck. It was also featured in 2000 uh, in Cal Magazine. It's a very rare Japan magazine. Rick Bentley had shared those uh, photos with us and we posted in the past. Uh, you can look up our customs and look at the photos he's tagged in or Mike Kaufman. Uh, look at the photos that he's tagged in. I know these. Uh, Mike was um, a friend of Down to Earth and I think technically Syndicate um, minis and compacts. So Syndicate of Style kind of ties into Air Syndicate and I think a nod to Syndicate uh, compacts and minis. But I don't know if he was a yeah, it looks like Syndicate right there. I think he was in Syndicate when this went down. But I know, again, he's he's brothers with uh, Down to Earth as well. So, again, just an amazing, amazing, amazing one there. Doc's Corner. And then the California Custom USA ad. Believe the hype. Crew cabs are starting to come on the rise for uh, minis. Color Me Map. Uh, something I watched on Netflix recently, they're kind of shorter episodes, I forget what it's called, but it's about, it talks about technology and just the evolution of how things have changed over the course of time, and there's a episode that's maybe 15, maybe 20, 25 minutes, that talks about GPS, it was pretty interesting on how it actually originally started in the 50s, someone figured it out, um, I won't give it all away, but it kind of goes into the 80s, and then um, how the U.S. government kind of scrambled it a little bit so it wasn't as accurate and um, for war situations. And it's just kind of an interesting thing if you're into that stuff. Here you have Keeping It In Stitches. A few weeks back, we met a gentleman named Ernest Aguilar at uh, Southern California Cruise. He has a pretty slim at Astro Van. And it kind of goes in to say here, they could duplicate entire trucks right down to the custom paint. So pretty crazy. Kind of cool technology for the time. It's amazing to me to see how far the screen printing has went. If you look at what Brandt does for us at Graphic Disorder, it's just mind-blowing. So we see Chris Schmidt here. We see the, his uh, truck again. 
he sold this truck and it's literally in the same exact condition with a collector. Uh, we talked a little bit about that when he was on, but there you go. There's Chris's uh, rolling shot. It was featured in mini truck in, in black. We went through that issue and then it was on the cover, which I don't think we got through that issue yet. Here is some of the OG stuff. I remember ordering the white shirt. Back when mini truckers wore white shirts. Gold miner, real clean. And it was Sport Trucks by Dean. You can see the logo on the back. Uh, he had a, a badass four-door crew cab OBS truck. That One of my favorite trucks uh, that was on the cover of Trucking. He's still on Instagram too, Sport Trucks by Dean, but he's a different name. I don't know if he's still building trucks. Here is Floored. This thing was pretty crazy. Uh, really a badass truck with the colors. Uh, Texas truck we can see from the front plate. And again, kind of showing a little bit different angle from a feature standpoint. It's cool to see these trucks coming back full circle, but I would remind people, you know, in the late 80s into the 2000s, or the late 90s into the 2000s, um, mini truckers were pushing the limit, and they kind of, the way I've always spun it is they mash together with the sport truck era and mini trucks in the full-size era, and when they did, they went from trucks like this that are awesome to big, even bigger wheels and laid out on the ground. And again, you could slice or dice, you know, who helped push that movement. I think many truckers really did. And that's uh, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Purple and black interior, sweet headliner. And I do believe for a while uh, in Brian's column, he had a little background image and I think it was this uh, inside of the bed. Talk about clean, not cut at all, and uh, some flames laid down that are pretty badass. This was Jason Farley's 94 extended cab. And um, pretty cool. I went through this one recently, Armed and Dangerous. So this technically, if you get to page 5859, pages 5859, this was the first mini truck that was featured in street trucks from a page perspective. You can see there... Uh, I was always a fan of the F Phantom Grill. You got the original OG bumper and valence. Super clean. I love blue. So this one uh, was one of my uh, favorites at the time. It's got the cooler mirrors on it. Mine had the, uh, not even the ugly Dumbo mirrors. Mine had some ratchet work truck type mirrors on it. Super clean. This one was a 97, so a little bit more stuff with ABS and the way the computer was than my 94, but I think it was technically the same engine. Very clean. He's got the windshield wipers removed. Tweed for days, my friends. I would take this any day of the week. I love it. I had the same dash. Mine didn't have as many features like with the vents and stuff like that because it was uh, a bare bones, but badass, dangerous toys. 17th annual Western Nationals. And again, this would have been something Steve Stillwell, um, you know, would have, um, you know, been behind. Clean cut shave. Here is Grocery Getter. So a really cool navigator on some Colorado custom wheels. And uh, pretty badass. This was Al and Betty Mains Colorado custom wheels. I think they were the owners, if I remember correctly. Um, and of course they were advertising in the magazine, so they were kind of catering to them. That's back when TVs were still a thing and VCRs, believe it or not. A little bit of wood grain going down, a little pop out and uh, pretty clean. I dig the colors and something that always threw me off. Um, you know, I always thought of these as the big back window navigators. And really, if you really look at it, the window is, is all one size and this just kind of dips down the framing area. I don't know if it's just because that's where the wiper motor stuff is at, but, um, pretty clean. You know, I think these will come around and be, you know, considered classic at one point. And again, just not a two or four page feature, full blown deal. And again, I think based upon, uh, memory and kind of seeing there, I believe these were the owners of Colorado custom wheels. Speaking of Colorado custom, boom, perfect timing. There's that so you got three, four, five, six, seven, seven wheels. And uh, some that will bring back some memories for some of you guys, I'm sure. Uh, suicidal Tendencies, so a really badass suicide door. I remember reading this, not having any skills, going, man, that is a lot of work to take a door off and to do all of this. And um, 
I'm not a fabricator at all, but uh, I've always given it up to the fabricators because it's a lot of time to do stuff right. It's ironic now being into Lincolns as long as I have and seeing people talk about air suspension and, you know, some people are like, oh, no, just make a homemade kit. And other people were like, no way, man, that's ratchet. And it kind of brings me back to the old days of mini trucking that it's like, you know, people just laid their stuff out. And now in the Lincoln situation, it's a lot of guys buying kits, which, you know, is what I have. Here is Corey Brown of Severed. So this was the second, technically, mini truck featured in Street Trucks. And it was Severed Ties, which is awesome. Club I've been in since the late 90s. 99, 2000-ish. And um, perfecting the art of simplicity. Really cool. And again, boom, two page. That's all you needed on that one. Continuation of the of the tech article. Red Dog. Again, something Steve Stillwell, um, you know, was, was a big fan of. Although Brian McCormick did the feature and write-up. Um, just their plan of attack was, hey, let's have a little bit of everything. Here's a Nissan ad. Pair of Aces. Power Play. Just talking about some power steering. Some real good tech. And you can see, even though they were all um, color, they were smart enough to know, like, for this, and it could have been cost. You know, they just ran black and white photos, which I thought was good. Riding on air. So, again, an air suspension on a C10, 73 to 87. I used to love looking at these um, tech articles. I was always curious, too, on how people did different things, whether it's a bolt-on kit and how you know clean they would run stuff. Uh, pretty cool. Here's Like Father, Like Son. So we've had Sean Dell on. I saw Sean Dell when I was at uh, Cruising for a Cure several weeks back in September when I was out in California. Uh, this is kind of cool because it kind of talks about uh, Judy Dell, Sean, and his Sean's father, Frank, and, um, you know, you think about the legacy of this mini truck. I guess you could kind of say it's the third mini truck featured. Um, rest in peace, Eric Coleman from the color shop. You know, you just look at this truck and just go, man, it is so awesome. And then to be able to have it on a flatbed of your dad's, pretty sick. You can see the Lexan back window there. And one of the big things, if you, some of you guys will remember, he had the ALFs on this side, and then you have the different wheel on the other side. This did also, we will see this as part of a, a, wheel, a wheel ad as well. I always remember showing fools what time it is, and uh, just really an iconic truck, was on the cover of Mini Truck a couple of times. Just like the paint shop, Sean's wheel choice varies. And then he's got a pair of 17 by 7 chrome plated KMC Alps and the KMC Tarantula. That's the one I can never remember on the other side. And then, boom. Back when KMC, I think, would make hauler wheels. So pretty cool stuff. Tip of the cap to Sean. Still out there doing the damn thing. His son's involved. He's got a badass K5 Blazer. Okay, ninth annual Friends in Motion run. This was in Texas. And this one brought back some memories for me because I remember going on the old negative camper site and seeing, I forget if they called this one the mothership. There was a couple of different badass trucks on there. There you see Bill's from Extensive, his van. Pleasures with the green 88 to 98. There's Bill's van there, the whole th front three-quarter shot. Uh, this truck, I forget, I believe this is the one that um, was shot for the cover of Mini Truck, and then he ended up um, in Severed. I rode in his full size at Showfest one year. The Ghetto Bob's amazing S10. That thing is still around. Another guy owns it. Here is, of course, the famous Isuzu radars, Space Cab. Uh, this truck, I remember, again, looking at this for hours on the old NC site. This was an NC truck as well, I think. And at first, I thought that was Mitch Rawl. Maybe, maybe not. It's hard to tell. Here is a real clean Tahoe. 
four door. And again, look at the, I mean, just, I appreciate even if like this style wasn't mine, check out the, the grill. I appreciate, you know, just the quality of the time that would go into shooting this vehicle on the rocks with a nice background sunset deal. Here, you got this one still in here. And then here's West Coast Nats, uh, kind of getting towards the end. I used to stare at these photos. You can kind of see right here, um, Rob Rodell's Nissan. We talked a little bit about in there. The RA, that was a cool truck. I'm sure you guys could pick out some other ones in there. I remember the green Toyota. Here you can see Joe Musso's in the foreground. This was Craig Elder's. Um, it was one of the vehicles that I thought should be on the cover, and it's actually an issue two of Street Trucks. Uh, this epic photo, um, these were taken by Chris Schmidt and Courtney Hallowell. So Chris uh, followed Courtney over here, which was awesome. This badass S10 was around a long time. I can't remember if that was... That looks like Twisted Metal. There's the S10 I talked a little bit about in Mini Trucking, the K5 Blazer, and then... Um, uh, the big homie, we talked about totally polished. He was on as well. Ruben helped get him on, and that thing is amazing. That blazer, or excuse me, Suburban. I remember going on the totally polished website a bunch and, and watching like a video of that cruising down the road. So awesome. Here you have Colorado Custom Wheels. Back when they would travel a lot. Again, that was kind of under the original ownership. Here's the Chop Shop, so the, a real badass setup. You can see the Mitsubishi in there I talked a little bit about in mini truck and flip throughs you got the street trucks we'll see this in a second here is rob rodell uh gendro back when they had finished it that's going to be on the cover of mini truck in and then the forever low is it uh you can see here this is back when uh joe musso won best of show but this is back when they would print this stuff open bed full-size custom mini stuff like that and then here you go craig now owns this one Craig Rowley, but that uh, that truck, that famous Mazda. Here's Road Fools. So we've had Rob Rodell on. We've had Tim and Todd. They uh, Tim and Todd were on episode 300. We talked about this uh, with them, with Rob Rodell. And uh, we've shared some cool photos, some that were never shared before. And this is kind of um, some of the epic photos when they stopped at the place that has the Dinosaurs. Brett Oaks was there as well. Ghetto Bob. Lurch. And you can see Brett right there. Severed. Him and Kurt. Much love to those guys. Started Severed. I'm thankful for that. Give them all the praise. Facelift. So back when just swapping some uh, for white face gauges was sick. Toyota Tundra. Snuglid, next issue on sale, August 24th. The best $200 I've ever spent. Rest in peace, Courtney Hallowell. Again, if you need to bump this up to 4K, take screenshots, you can. I do record in 4K and upload in 4K. It takes longer, but it's worth it. Here's Cal Truck Jamboree. This was the original one, started in 86, I believe. This would have been the 13th annual. And check that out. Ballistic, for those scoring at home, is technically in the first issue of Street Trucks. You got this killer, amazing mini truck. Of course, Ghetto Bob on those, uh, what are those, the Tusks or Tusks 2. And then check out, speaking of Ghetto Bob, I think that was Ghetto Bob, wasn't it? Here you go. And then there's that famous photo, Craig Elder and the other yellow burb. The burb is the word. So, and then uh, West Coast Customs, Inside Ad, and then McGuire's, boom. So a little bit longer. I really appreciate you guys. If you stayed to the end, post a comment, say, hey, I was here to the end, or post a rocket emoji <laughs> if you do emojis like I do. Stay on the rise. We appreciate everyone. We'll hit you next week. I've already got a couple queued up for next week for mini trucking. Colorado Custom Wheels, Mike Kaufman, Ryan McCormick shoots the first cover. And um, it's a classic. We out here, y'all. Peace.